Hello fourth graders. Today we're going to estimate quotients using compatible numbers. Now the essential question is how can you use compatible numbers to estimate quotients? This lesson is going to seem very similar to a lesson earlier in the chapter when we were looking at ways to estimate quotients and finding that the multiples of a number are the best way to estimate in a division problem. Let's say we had the number 22 divided by 3. Remember we said doing a rounding of the number is not going to help us in most cases. If I was to round 22 to 20 and divide that by 3, that doesn't help us much because 22 is not a multiple of 3. 20 is not a multiple of 3. And so neither one would be considered a compatible number to divide by 3. Compatible numbers by the divisor 3 would be any multiple of 3. So basically we're going to go back to that same concept that we looked at earlier in this chapter. Now let's take a look at 22 divided by 3. What would be a compatible number or what number would make it easier if I could change 22 uh, what would make it easier to divide by 3? Now remember, if we're only looking for estimates, then we don't have to come up with an exact answer. So you choose a number that would be close to 21, that is a multiple of 3, and you divide by that, and you know that that is 7, so therefore 22 divided by 3 is about 7. Now we're going to be using larger numbers here, but it isn't, the idea isn't going to be too much different than when we use the smaller dividends. So let me get rid of this little piece here. And we're going to think compatible numbers are really going to be multiples of the divisor. So let's look at this problem that we have here. A horse's heart is 132 times in three minutes. About how many times does it beat in one minute? So if 132 is how many times it beats in three minutes, then to be able to figure out how many times it beats in one minute, we need to divide by the three minutes. Therefore, that would create the number of beats per minute. Now, you can use compatible numbers to estimate quotients. And as we said before, compatible numbers are numbers that are easy to compute mentally. And when it comes to division, compatible numbers are always going to be those multiples of the divisor. Let's look at example one. Find a number close to 132 that divides easily by three, and we're going to use basic facts. So remember my little strategy here, we're just going to underline the first two digits. So instead of thinking of 132 as a complete three digit number, we're just going to look at the 13 tens part of it because that is 13 tens. And we know that the multiple that is of 3 that is just below 13 is 12, and the multiple of 3 that is just greater than 13 is 15. But remember, these, as over here it says, 12 divided by 3 is a basic fact. So we can take that 12, we do need to remember that it's a 120 divided by 3. All right, and this would of course be multiplied by 10 to make that 150 divided by 3. So 120 divides easily by 3. And then as we discovered, 15 divided by 3 is a basic fact. 150 divides easily by 3. Now step two, we need to use the place value. So we want to think of 120 as 12 tens, which we know it is. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. I'll put the 12 here. We'll put the 12 here. I'll work on the page. So therefore 12 tens divided by 3 is 4, but it's 4 tens. Now we have to convert our 4 tens back to a standard number. So 120 divided by 3, 4 tens in standard form is 40. Should seem pretty familiar, right? And of course we have to fill in, so a horse's heart beats about 40 times a minute. 
Now down here in example two, we're going to use compatible numbers to find two estimates that the quotient is between. Now we're working with much larger numbers. I'm going to pull that out over here so I have more space to work. That's 1,382 divided by 5. Now again, larger numbers shouldn't put you off because we're still going to look at the first two digits. So that's 13, now we're in the hundreds, but it's still 13, 13 hundreds. So let's look over here. What would be a basic fact of, or a multiple, excuse me, of 5 that's less than 13, well, we would have 10, right? And then another multiple of 5 that would be greater than 13 would be 15. But we know that 10 is 10 hundredths, so we would put the two zeros there. And 15 would be 15 hundredths. And of course, we can also say that's instead of 10 hundredths, 1,000, or 1,500. So you can see over here, that 10 divided by 5 is a basic fact. So 1,000 divides easily by 5. And we have 15 divided by 5 as a basic fact. So 15 divides easily by 5. 1,382 is between 1,000 and 1,500. We know that our actual dividend is in between these two multiples of 5. So let's look over here. Step 2, divide each number by 5 using place value. So we know that 1,000 is the same as 10 hundredths, and 10 hundredths divided by 5 is 2 hundredths, because 10 divided by 5 is 2, but 2 hundredths needs to be written this way. And then down here we have 15 hundredths divided by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3, but it's 3 hundredths, or written in standard form, 3 hundredths. So therefore, 1,382 divided by 5 is between 200 and 300. Now explain which estimate you think is more reasonable. Here's the term more reasonable. They're both reasonable. And we know that our actual quotient is in between those two. But what's going to determine one being more reasonable than the other? Well, it's basically the one that is closest to the real or actual dividend. So if you're looking at 1,382, is that closer to 1,000 or 1,500? And if you think about it, it is closer to 1,500. Our answer that is more reasonable, or maybe closer, you could say, to the actual answer is 300. We know our actual answer has to be less than 300, but it is going to be closer to 300 than it will be to 200. I hope this helped, and we'll continue. I don't think you're going to have a lot of problems with this lesson today, because it's certainly very similar to what we did in lesson one from chapter four.